Spiral. A new chapter from the Book of Saw connects some dots to bring a twisted plot of justice similar to other chapters. Let's take a look at how the Jigsaw copycat killer is willing to play the game. Detective Mark Boswick, an off-duty police officer, follows a thief through a sewer drainage pipe during a 4th of July parade. Boswick is attacked from behind by a man wearing a pig mask, and when he awakens, he is hanging by his tongue in a busy subway tunnel. He is given the option to rip out his tongue and live, or to wait until the next train arrives and die. Boswick is murdered by the train after failing to flee the trap in time. The following day, Detective Ezekiel Zekebanks is given a new partner in idealistic rookie William Schenk by police chief Angie Garza. When Banks and Schenk look into Boswick's death, they find similarities between it and the recently deceased jigsaw killer. In the meantime, a murder investigator called Fitch is kidnapped and put in a trap where he must rip his fingers off to prevent electrocution in a filling water basin, he also fails to escape and perishes. Several years earlier, Fitch had rejected a backup call from Banks, nearly losing his life. Due to his relationship with Fitch in the past, some police officers start to believe that Banks may be guilty. Then a box with a puppet of a pig and a portion of Shink's tattooed skin arrives at the station. Cops are directed to a butcher shop by a little vial that was once a hobby store that Banks and his father, retired Chief Marcus Banks, frequented. When the squad gets there, they find a tape recorder and Shank's skinned body. Marcus visits a warehouse after deciding to find the murderer on his own when he is kidnapped. Shortly after, Garza is abducted and put in a trap in the cold storage of the precinct where she must slash her spinal cord with a blade to stop hot wax from pouring down her face. She succeeds but dies from her injuries, and Banks finds her body. Banks is arrested while following a tip, and when he awakens at the warehouse, he is shackled to a pipe with a hacksaw close by. He considers chopping off his arm, but manages to flee by grabbing a bobby pin that has come loose. He then finds Pete, his former partner, locked up after Banks uncovered a murder he had committed. A gigantic glass crushing machine in front of him has been modified to shoot shrapnel at him at a fast rate of speed, a tape recorder informs Banks that he may either release him or leave him to perish. Banks tries to save Pete, but blood loss kills him. Banks finds Shank in a different chamber, where it is discovered that Shank was actually the copycat all along and had been using Boswick's skin corpse to simulate his own death. He says that he is actually Emerson, shot because he had agreed to testify against a corrupt police officer, the son of the victim Pete killed. Additionally, he admits that Marcus protected dishonest officers, such as Garza, while serving as chief in an effort to more effectively sweep the streets of crime. Emerson gives Banks one last test since he thinks he can be an ally. The test reveals Marcus restrained in the air and being slowly drained of blood. Dispatcher sends a SWAT squad to Emerson's position after he dials 911 and says he is a civilian being chased by a shooter. He hands Banks a revolver with one bullet left in it and gives him the option of either killing Emerson and letting his father bleed to death, or using the remaining bullet to shoot a target that will rescue Marcus while letting Emerson escape. Banks chooses to shoot the target in an effort to free Marcus from his bindings and bring him to the ground. After that, Banks starts a battle with Emerson. Soon later, the SWAT team shows up and unintentionally trips a tripwire, which causes Marcus's handcuffs to pull him back up. As handcuffs drag his arm forward, it is seen that a gun is attached to it, the SWAT squad kills him as a result. As Emerson flees, Banks cries in pain.